Howdy chat, how we doing? As per usual, my name's Scotty D49, and tonight we're gonna keep on going with painting more Death Watch Space Marines. Welcome to the show, guys. Glad you can join me on this Friday night. Uh, as you can probably hear, got some new tunes. You can see probably stream startups a bit different. Been working on it, which is great. Uh, yeah, look, thanks for joining me, guys. Hope you guys are having a great uh, week so far. I'm keen to hang out with you guys tonight. I hope you guys are too. Uh, so yeah, you know, if you want to drop anything in chat, say g'day, you know, I'm happy to have a conversation all throughout tonight. You know, I'm going to be streaming probably till about 11.30, 12 o'clock. Uh, and I do have another stream tomorrow. If you're down to learn how to play Warhammer 40k, tomorrow the st morning stream from about 10.30, 11 o'clock in the morning at Jolt Games. Tune in. It's going to be a great game against one of my good mates, Matt. Another Marine player, different map to the map we had on last time. It's going to be a great game. Salamanders versus the Death Watch. 2,000 points. Uh, with the new Death Watch Codex out as well, it's going to be an awesome an awesome stream, that game as well. We're going to take it a bit slower. We're going to work through it. Uh, as I'm wetting my brushes here, getting them ready to go. Hope you guys are having a good, good night. Uh, I've hit the gym, had some food, and I'm ready to go. But dinner is still a ways off. So... Let's uh, get in. If you've got any feedback as well, feel free to chuck it in chat. Love to hear it. Whether it's about music, whether it's volumes, anything like that, let me know. Uh, I'm still working on it. Love your feedback as well. So, here we go. Um, you know, we're going we're gonna to keep on painting. So, last stream, if you weren't with us, we finished this dude. So, uh, Death Watch Vet. He's actually one of my going to be one of my sergeants for one of my other units, but I just needed to finish him. And um, so, as you can see, my guys are magnetized, and I've kept him off his legs, and that's a pivotal reason. As you might have seen in my Facebook post, we're going to be doing the basing on him tonight. So the priority for the night is yes, getting the base coats down on these dudes, on this last dude. Stormbolter, another dude. But we want to fully complete the legs. We want to finish these legs completely so that as the base coats are dry... Well, oh, excuse me. As the base coats are drying and this guy's done, we can actually put the basing on there and start that process. So it's going to be awesome. So we may as well... I'm just going to drop this a little bit in my head so I can hear myself a bit better. Uh, but yeah, let's... Uh, we're going to jump straight into it, hey? So I think we will start with the legs because it's going to be the first point of call. Um, now there's a purity seal, there's an inquisitorial eye and the, and the mesh. So we're going to grab the colors that we need, which is going to be lead belcher, retributor armor. We're going to need corn red. We'll start with mournfang brown, followed up by yushapti bone. I think that's going to be it for the base coats. So yeah, alrighty. Now, of course, I will probably get a text message when food's here, so just be apprised of that. And I'm just going to shoot a mate of mine a message. Just give me one sec. Alrighty, so we're just going to crack straight in. I haven't done any painting since last painting stream as well. Um, so we're going we're gonna to go with the middle base coating brush. As I'm, as I'm doing this as well, I just want to take a minute to thank everyone that's also followed the channel since last stream. Um, you know has been since last Saturday as well. So we had a couple of guys, which has been great. Uh, we're, we're getting there. As you can probably see, I've got the follow account there as well. Sitting on 40 followers, which is great. Um, the goal is to get to 50 followers as soon as possible. So yeah, if you haven't followed the channel, uh, I'd greatly appreciate it as then, you know, if you want to donate to the channel, you'll then be able to. If you want to sub, I'll set that up as well. Um, but yeah, no, it's it, and with that, guys, there's no obligation when we do get to it. 
Uh, it'll be one of those things if you want to, go for it. And I'll be fully transparent. Anything you give to the stream will just go straight back into the stream. Uh, making it better, whether that's different overlays, whether that's transitions, uh, better equipment, all that kind of stuff will be purely based off you guys as well. And of course, I'll improve it over time as well um, you know, as, as time gets on. So just gonna start with the lead belcher and doing the base coats over the, uh, the vented areas. If you are wondering why we've got, why I've decided to go and find some different music. Over the last week, there's been a bit of a, a bit of a thing with DMCA's from a couple of American music companies. And so I was noticing on my videos, particularly the painting ones that are, you know, it'd be silent um, because, you know, copyright. And so I decided, you know what? I can stream copyrighted music and whatnot and have it suppressed every single time um, and potentially have the stream get pulled down. Or I can just find some royalty-free music, which is what I've done. Um, this is all from YouTube's uh, royalty-free library as well. So, yeah. But yeah, so, you know, but as per usual guys, greatly appreciate you guys joining us on stream. Now, I did get a text message from the wife telling me that pizza is here. So, I will get the base coats done on this dude, and then I will go grab pizza. Because, um, you know, pizza's great. Especially after a good workout that I had this afternoon. Alright, so that's all the metal done on him. What I'll do is we'll get the base coats all done here first. So... message to the wife. All right, we're, we're, we'll do the gold next. So, but also if you haven't uh, gone over and liked the Facebook page, that is where I will be posting up all of uh, the stream info that I'll be doing. You know, if you've got, you know, if there are lists there for the game, you know, I'll have them linked in Nightbot as well. Uh, so, all the links are in Nightbot 2. But yeah. Alright, where's that brush that I just had? This guy.
Now, because it's only on the knee pad, I don't need an awful lot. Like, I don't need all the gold that I did get out. But to get a solid base coat down, I'm just going to go over it quite heavily. Like that. Perfect. It's exactly what we want. But also, you can probably tell my taste in music <laughs> as well. I, I'm a, I, I like my rock. So, alright. I will need to fix this guy up tonight. And my uh, hobby gear is in a box underneath my table. Because I need to deal with this red box and I haven't. So, before I use it, I'm going to deal with it. So, if you were with us last time, I would have showed you how much gunk it is up the top there. So, I'm actually just going to get in there and just carefully pull it all out. Or at least try to. But the knife isn't wanting to work. It's it is caked on pretty hard. So And that's what I gotta be careful of is slicing myself as I do this. So I might work the other way. Slice it down the middle just to break it up a little bit and then I'm gonna try and clean this out but there's something I need to do because otherwise it's gonna mean that this pot dries out and I don't want that and that is what I was hoping for is being able to grab a massive chunk and start that process off I think I'm going to need something stronger. I might get a file out that's got a nice point. And then I can just shove it in underneath and... This one will do. And then I won't risk cutting myself. cooking and yes I'm gonna get red paint all over me but you know it is what it is and I have to do this so we're getting it there Hope you guys are having a good Friday night and, and you know, thanks for joining me as well. Really do appreciate it. Almost finished this part. This last little piece that's deciding, no, nah, I'm gonna decide to slip around here, there, and everywhere instead of actually come up and out. 
but I'm also getting all the shavings in the paint, which is not what I want. Not what I want whatsoever. So. Now it's going to be time for the hobby knife to get in there with the, the point so I can leverage it and probably just stick straight in and I can probably pull it out this way. Oh, no. Almost got all of it. Yeah, it's just going around in circles. Ah, there we go. And that's it. Nice and clear. This is what we want. Did cost us a little bit of red paint in the process, but, you know, that is what it is, I'm afraid. Um, so. Just need a clean off this file so it doesn't uh and I just broke the file. Lovely. It's not straight enough. <laughs> oh jeez. Not what I want because that was one of my good ones. Anyway I can just pick up another one at my hobby store tomorrow. They've got the mini ones, which are those ones that I use. Alright, cool. Now let's get painting. There's probably a little bit in there, yep. We'll pick that up and put that. Now that's closing a lot easier. Now, purity seals can be difficult to get right. But if you have some patience and you just work with it, you can, you can get them without having a lot of overflow, without getting a lot of red on the actual parchment itself. Just like that. We'll do the Beastial Brown. Well, sorry, Mournfang Brown. Beastial Brown is what it used to be called. Which I'm just like... I'm used to, but also not. I've, yeah. So we'll get a little bit out for this one. We just want to use it to uh, base coat for underneath the Ushapti bone. Just so it'll go on a little easier. Rather than having to uh, do it straight over black. Now, I do know that the red is still wet, but I'm just being relatively careful in my strokes.
Now, that gold is pretty solid. I shouldn't need to do a second coat there. So, whilst that dries, guys, I'm going to go grab some food. So, I'm going to be right back in a second. I'm going to let the music go on. Please stick with me. I'll be back in a minute or two with my food and we can chat and hang out together. Alrighty guys, I'm back. Um, what I'm gonna do is I will switch to the painting scene. However, I will hide that. So you don't actually have to see me eat. But yeah. Good old meat lovers pizza. Can't go wrong.
Alrighty. Now I got some food into me. Let's get back into it. Now, if you've just joined me, thanks for joining the stream. Uh, we're working on some Death Watch Space Marines, as the title says. However, the plan is to get the feet, the legs, done first. So then I can base the other five guys. So I've just got one more base coat to go. Um, so I've put down the, the brown, so now I'm going to do the Shufti Bone for that. I believe i got a second pot of this stuff sitting here as well. If I need it, but I shouldn't do. This should hold up for a little bit longer, hopefully. All right. Yeah. Hey, Chief, how you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good. I'm having a I'm having a good evening. Thanks for joining us. How's your evening going, man? Yeah, nice man, nice. How's the progress going so far on the uh, armies on parade board? Cool. I will have a cheeky look where's my business well Facebook it used to be page manager for Facebook but then it's um now changed to uh the business suite oh nice man that's looking sick already I see you went with the um standard G dub board as well because you've got the um, inlay cracks or have you done that yourself yeah yeah cool so you filled in the skulls with um with some swamp by looks But yeah, dude, that's coming along nicely. And then I've just got to... Oh. I put that one forward. I did download that one twice, so let me just... Uh... Remove that one from the list. Yeah, nice, man. Clear blue resin would be sick. But yeah, dude, send through progress shots. Like, if there's any other parts you've been working on and it's looking great, like, I'd love to see them as well. It's, it's definitely shaping up um, to, to look like an awesome project for you. All right. So now I'm going to let that dry before I come back to it. Because I'm going to have to do a second coat of that... Um, Shafty bone. So, 
we're going to pick another piece and we're going to start with base coats. There. I think we're going to do the Storm Bolter. Because that one is going to be the least colours, but also enable me to, you know, work on stuff relatively quickly too. Ah, uh, still the same unit. So a unit of um, five guys with Storm Bolters and Storm Shields. Um, so I'm just working on the last guy for the unit. Um, which, are, which is good. Uh, I'm glad that I, I'm actually able to get this unit done. Because then that's the five standard veterans done. Uh, the last five of my 25 standard veterans. I've still got um, Kill Team Cassius. But... Um, you know, I've got that to do. I've got some bikes, a couple of Razorbacks, etc. to you to paint up, but I don't count those towards the veteran count. Um, the only one, other ones that I do is Kill Team Cassius, but the standard veterans I'm not counting toward, uh, um, the veterans from Kill Team Cassius I'm not counting towards that though. So, but yeah, hopefully, um, you know, over time I'll get this force fully done but i i just i just love the the kind of the lore and everything to do with the death watch the, the elite marines and all that so yeah just another dude he's also got a cape so i did the guys without capes first or cloak i should say however you want to determine it um because these guys in my unit are sergeants so all the standard dudes are done, just the... Oh, I haven't got them yet, picking them up first thing tomorrow morning. So, uh, I have got a game against uh, one of the local guys uh, that I'll be streaming as well. For uh, He hasn't played a game of ninth yet. So, I'll be using the, uh, the supplement in that match. So... But yeah, it looks to, looks to be good. Uh, I've got the book and data cards. So, hopefully that'll make things a bit easier in terms of stratagems. And if I, if I find that they are, I'll probably end up picking up the marine stratagems as well. I dare say. Uh, so I'll be streaming it probably from 10, 30, 11 in the morning uh, at Jolt is the plan because I'll get in there first thing. I'll need to set up. Um, and so, yeah, there will be, I, I will warn now, there will be unpainted models um, from Matt. Uh, so, but, you know, he's testing out new lists and stuff, so... Uh, yeah, it, it's kind of a learning match as well, so it's not a bigger, as big of a, uh, you know, issue than, say, a league game or another game that I'd be streaming, so. Yeah, oh man, it's all good. I've got the, I've got my YouTube set up as well, um, so if, if the replay is not up here by the time you end up getting to it. I'll make sure it's up on the YouTube as well. But yeah, so I've been been chipping away at stuff for the stream as well, which has been nice to do. Um, you know, I've, I've still got a few things to do, like the Instagram and, um, you know, chip away at other things that I... You know, as you can probably see, there's the top bar now as well that shows the most recent sub and follower. So just working on that. Um, so yeah, just yeah, slowly chipping away at things. It's you know, don't want to don't want to rush it and uh, burn myself out on doing things. I want this to be a you know just something I do in addition to my standard hobby stuff and my standard gaming. So it's more of a labor of love than anything else for me so all right now most of that is actually dry so i'm actually going to continue with the blue and just 
water it down a bit further actually so that it's not as bad and then just coat it over the top but yeah what other hub are you working on chief I will be on till probably about 10.30, uh, not 10.30, sorry, 11.30, 12. Um, so then I've got to go through. I've got the lists for tomorrow, so I'll be posting those up after stream. And then I will be promptly going and setting up a few things on Nightbot and then heading to bed. That is my plan. So that tomorrow everything is all set and ready to go, that I just need to break down the gear here. Um, put in my bags and grab the army and head to the store. That That's pretty much the plan. So, the plan is for a nice sleep in, hopefully. Nah, all good, my man. I'll, I'll catch you soon. You gotta do what you gotta do, Chief. You gotta do what you gotta do. So, nah, I completely understand, my man. Alright, cool. So, your Shafty Bone's still drying on that, so I'm gonna leave that still. And what we're gonna actually do, we're gonna do the bronze. So, there's a, there's a bullet casing there on the front that we're gonna go over and I'll save the rest of the blue that's there first. But yeah, so I hope you guys are enjoying the stream, enjoying the content. Uh, you know, if you've got any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, you know, I'm always happy to have a chat with you guys, you know. This is a, this is a uh, new guy welcome stream. Um, so yeah. So this one is going to need two coats, so it's, uh, I'm using her Shook Copper for this one. This is one of my favourite golds that G-Dub does. Um, so that and Retributor Armor. I just, I really like how warm the tone is on it. And even though it's a layer, and yes it does take two coats, it's ac it actually comes up not super bright like Retributor Armor does. But it also doesn't come up super dark like Balthazar Gold. So it's kind of that in-between gold, you know what I mean? Which is good. But, you know, the only downside is you got to do two coats. Which is fine. Like, I don't mind. It means you get a solid, solid finish. So there's this little hole... I can stick the brush through. I'm just trying to get the excess from being out there. So. Yeah. 
Alright, so as that dries, I'll avoid the metal on that part and where it's actually touching on the blue tack. But I'm actually going to go and do the metal. And this is kind of my standard process. I'll do each piece, I'll do the base coats. So I'll do one piece, I'll do all the base coats entirely. Then move on to the next piece, do all the base coats entirely. And then the next one. So that, you know, I'm not, you know, slogging through doing everything for one piece. Nor am I also slogging through and doing, uh, you know, tedious stuff. Like, I always do the shields last because they're the most tedious, right? So... Ledge Belcher has got great coverage, so I don't necessarily need to do two coats for this one. I'm just going to start at the back and work my way forward. And then whilst yes, I, I do want to Somewhat not, you know, be careless with where the paint goes. It's also not a huge deal as well, because I always come back and do touch-ups. So, this part that I'm doing right now with these ribbings, will probably come, uh, I will go back around and touch up around them and such. Because, you know, then I'll need it. So it's getting hit there in terms of the uh, the metal. Now I did actually make a mistake on the other storm bolter that I did, which is quite funny. So the ribbings across the top here are actually meant to be metal. I did them blue on the other dude. So there's that. <laughs> But an easy way to tell a sergeant, I reckon. For that one. So. But yeah. Just, just going right the way around and then I'll come back and I'll hit the front.
Now this is where it gets a bit tricky, is because I have to navigate around the gold. Which is fine, you know. As I, as I said, I'm going to go back and do touch-ups anyway, so it doesn't really worry me all that much. But yeah. So... So, now just the ribbing. And then I've still got the bottom to do, but that's fine. I'll hit that once that's dry. Alright, so leave the snow bolts for now. And what we'll do is we'll do the second coat on the the Ushapti bone. And then from there, we're going to hit it with touch-ups. So this is where I'm wanting to do a bit of a thinner coat, just because there's some streaking in that, so... I'm going to grab some of it, but not a whole heap. And then what I'll do is I'll water it down a heck of a lot. Uh, so then... It's more the consistency of what a layer paint should be. Because it's, you know, or, you know, more of a kind of milky consistency, I should say, not the consistency of layer paint, because it is a layer paint. So, by just doing the, the really watered down, what that'll do is, because it'll dry flat in where it needs to, It'll stop any streaks. It's very similar to technique as to what I've done with my all my cloaks and that as well. But also you don't want to saturate it in such a way that it will dry um, pulled. So what I'll do now is I'll go in and I'll re-soak up some paint in particular areas where it's pooling because you don't want that um, especially along this underneath one but yeah so then once that's once that's dry we're good to go and then of course I'll save the paint even though it's watered down it'll still like, there's still not that much there. I still use quite a bit, so. But 
but yeah. So, that's the legs done for base coats. So, next up is going to be the touch-ups. Now, the black's getting the point that the red is as well. That the red was, sorry, but not anywhere near as bad. So, if I am able to manage it, I do manage it. So, this is one of those times where I'll manage it. This is built up in a couple of spots. I'll just get the tweezers and I'll just pull it out. Sometimes they can be these can be a little bit stubborn and not want to come out, especially around the back. So it's also why I've got the uh, the longer nose ones. They're handy, so I can push it through. That should help it close a bit better. All right. Now, depending on the spot, this could depend on the brush I use. But we're gonna start with the, uh, not the insane detail, we'll start with the detail. Now, I'm gonna start on the other side, so I'm gonna start with the gold first, where the gold is and then work my way around. Just very carefully. So this is the knee pad pretty much done. I'm just going around again, just making sure that it's nice and clean, which it is. Perfect. Now, that is so much cleaner. Hopefully it decides to wanna, there we go. You can see how that knee pad is nice and clean now. Yes, I may be getting black on where I want metal, but that's going to be an easy fix. So, 
Now, because I've had to do that, I'm going to have to actually go around it and touch up the actual entire piece because otherwise it'll actually look off in terms of the colour. Just so it's consistent is more the thing. Same with the crotch. So Touching up along the top. Not too concerned about the top, but still just want to keep it uniform. It's just a, a, a habitual thing that I do. Alrighty. That's getting there. That's looking pretty good now. I'm sure there's maybe one or two spots that aren't wanting to comply. Up over here. That's okay. Just doing the underside first. Yeah, we're slowly, slowly getting there, which is always nice. Hope you guys are enjoying your Friday night. I appreciate you guys joining me. It's always great to hang out with you, whether you know you're just watching and just chilling, or you're hobbying yourself. Yeah, it's always good.
give me a sec, chat. I've got to shoot something over to someone. It wasn't wanting to show up for me where it was. And it's not wanting to show up there either. This is really sucky. I don't like the new Facebook app. It's really annoying. So. So, all right, where was I up to? I was up to the second but here. So, So I'm going to do Now I'm going to be very careful around this purity seal. So I don't particularly want to uh Screw up the work I've just done on it. And this is the point where I'm going to get the insane detail and go in and around. Just so it's nice and clean and crisp. As I'd rather it that way than not. Pretty good. It's not the best, but you know, it is what it is. So now I've just got to finish touching up right around to the other side. Alrighty. So, there's the, the purity seal if I decide to get it to focus. It's got a little bit of black on some spots, but that's okay. I can go back and touch those up as well. Um, the gold's pretty good. The silver's got some spots to do as well. So, um, this time we'll go in with the metal and I'm actually going to go in with character brush give me a finer point with a bit more control oh 
I'm a, I'm a clean guy. I, I like clean. However, uh, when it comes to basing, like, I dry brush. So, I don't mind if it gets a little bit on the feet. Um, so, if I grab one of the guys that's kind of finished, you might be able to see it. Uh, no, not on him, actually. Um, where is he? I've got this old Inquisitor that I've used previously. If you have a look at his feet, if I can get the right angle. Is that his feet? There's a little bit of, little bit of weathering. But not really too much anywhere else. And he is a bit dusty. So yeah. So around his feet down at the bottom there. There is a little bit of weathering. Um, but yeah, I try to, you know, keep it nice and clean. It's just, just my preference. Um, I, I haven't really looked in too much into weathering, personally. I know there's a bunch of AK Interactive products that are really good for, like, different weathering effects, whether it's rust or soot um, or grime, like, all that kind of stuff. Their, their products are really good for that. Um, you know, there's the G-Dub stuff as well, like Blood for Blood God, or you've got Rise of Rust. Types of corrosion, all those kind of ones. So yeah, I'm just, you know, everyone's got their own style. Yeah, 100%. It's hard to get the good styles without ruining it. Um, you know, I've even heard some people actually will go and they'll do a matte varnish first or, or a, um, a gloss varnish. Pro more often than not a matte um, because then what they can do if they miss up, for example, oil washing, pin oil washing, rather than actually using the normal washes, um, they can actually go back to just before they were doing that, the, the washing. Um, but yeah, it just depends on the technique and your skill level, so, but for me, I, I've always been, uh, I, I like a nice, crisp, clean finish on my minis personally which does take time I'm not gonna say it doesn't uh, you know you've just gotta you know once you find a style you like you just gotta invest the time Yeah, thanks, man. Like, I, I do take, a, a you know, some patience and, you know, I've, I've had to refine my process over many years, um, you know, doing this. And so, I've tried, you know, dry brushing and, and getting those style of effects to work and I just find they just don't turn out as well as I'd like. Whereas... Sure, when I started doing edge highlighting, I wasn't amazing at it, but, you know, now I'm able to get actually really crisp ed edge highlights with the right brush, and, you know, it just, you're right, it does show. Um, it And it's all about that patience, it's about that time taken, um, and refining your craft. So, and I'm not saying, like, you can't, refined doing weathering and all that either you 100% can once you get your method down and you're confident and you're 110% confident with it you'll be able to replicate it so many times over um, without even thinking like what you need to do next you'll just it'll just be a process and you'll know it and it'll just be really easy for you And that's where I'm up to with my process. Yeah, oh. Everyone's different with highlights. Everyone's got a different opinion, you know. And there are guys that'll say, even in our local area, like there are guys that'll say, use a makeup brush and dry brush your H highlights on. And it's like, yeah. You know, there are other guys that'll paint, paint them on like myself. Um, and there are other guys that just don't do it like yourself, Chief. Like, so... As I said, everyone has got their own their own flavor, their own craft that they're working on. So, but 
that's what I love about this hobby as well is that everyone can take like can do different techniques and no two armies um, unless you know they're commissioned painted by someone in a specific style uh, generally will look the same like that people will add their own their own flavor to it they always have they always will Ah, but you know, you gave it a shot, and you know, you probably didn't, you know, didn't like maybe how long it took or the effect that it had, you know, and, and you know that's perfectly fine. And so with your stuff, you've decided to go with more of a weathered look, um, and you know what, it works, and you're happy with that, and that's you know that's what matters. Alright, so that's the red touched up. Then there's one more thing. That I uh, that I need to touch up on him, and that's you shut the bone. And then I'll go back to the storm bolter and we'll keep on going with that. So, but yeah, like, I, I always reckon, give it a go at least. If you don't like it, you never have to go back to it. So. Just being very careful with the shoe shafty bone and just fixing up those edges. Blend it in so I've just done it really watered down. Yeah, Salamand is a because it's a green, it's I, I reckon it's a little harder to do the edge highlights or at least finding the right green. Because you don't want them to pop out like a like a you know like a neon green billboard, right? But you also don't want it to be subtle too subtle. That, you know they're hardly noticed so picking the right green to do it in is the key with the sallies all right cool touch-ups done on this dude so there's the purity seal all nice it hopefully that no nah, focus in on the legs there we go so it's all nice and touched up I'll have to hold that there so all nicely touched up underneath there and at the bottom there as well so yeah I'm happy with that and we're gonna keep on going I'm probably gonna do the second coat of the Hushuk Copper next um, and then keep on going from there but yeah Hope you guys are enjoying the stream. Uh, if you have not, 
and, and do enjoy the content but haven't followed and, and you want to keep apprised as to when we're, when I'm streaming, you know, feel free to drop a follow. Um, you know, it'd be really appreciated. I'm trying to get to an affiliate. Um, so it'd be great if you could you know, show some support if you decide to. I'm not going to, you know, fit you into it. Uh, generally, I don't do writing on my purity seals. I keep them nice and uh, clean in that regard. But I do wash them. I do put a, uh, a Seraphim CP wash over the top of them. Um, so I do have that more aged parchment look to them than the, the freshly clean one. And I believe this isn't wanting to focus in on down here. There we go. The Z920s are pretty uh, finicky when it comes to their autofocus. But, yeah. Just learn to manage it. So just putting on a solid second coat. Oh shit. Whoops. I just opened Rapid Tributor Armor and put the bronze into it. That's fixed. Good thing it was only a small amount. Um. Yeah, so they've got the flo the Corvus Black Star. They only used to be able to have access to Rhinos, Razorbacks, Drop Pods, uh, and Land Raiders. However, now that they've been rolled into the main Marine Codex with a supplement, they actually get access to every single vehicle and other option for the Marines, bar Tactical Marines, Assault Marines, Devastators, Stern Guard Vets, and I believe Bikes. I think that's the only other one they don't have access to. But they've got access to everything else. Which is actually insane. So... They've, they've got so much. Yeah. The problem is, they still don't have access to marine weapons at the same level. So, because you can't take standard Devastators, like, because you, you're kind of only got the veterans to take for your troop choices, they've only got a specific war gear list, and they've only got, like, four heavy weapons, five heavy weapon options. They've got the Missile Launcher, the Heavy Bolter, the Heavy Flamer, the Infernus Heavy Bolter, which is the Heavy Flamer and Heavy Bolter bolted together, uh, which is pretty sick, and then the Frag Cannon. That is literally all they have access to in terms of their heavy weapons for their main troop unit. So if you're looking to get Laz Cannons, if you're looking to get Plasma Cannons, um, Plasma Cannons you can take on Terminators, but it, it's um, one every five. Um, but yeah, most of your heavy weaponry, you have to go to vehicles for. So you're looking at Dreadnoughts. Yeah, Hellfire Rounds, they were really good when they were just straight up, uh, two plus to wound. Now they're only plus one to wound. So it's not, not an automatic two up. Uh, it's only plus one to the wound roll. So, they did nerf that a little bit. However, the ammo is nothing to sneeze at in terms of the vengeance rounds. They no longer reduce range, but they increase damage by one. So, you can effectively, in um, Tactical Doctrine, 
with standard bolters. You're at neg one. Say you don't move. You're firing 20 shots if it's a unit of 10 vets. Neg one, two damage a piece. And they're gonna fail some saves. So plus the additional reroll ones to wound against a particular unit type um, for mission tactics. So against that that particular unit, you're you're gonna convert. So the only problem is that special issue ammo is limited to certain amount of weapons on units, and no primaris units get special issue ammo anymore. So it means you're um, you're taking like if you want that special issue ammo, you're either taking veterans or bikes, because terminators no longer get it with storm bolters. So. I'm hoping that the, the supplement will fix that a little bit, but I'm not sure. We'll, um, I shall see tomorrow morning. But no, you're right, Chief, that, you know, there's, there's nothing to sneeze at in the Codex anymore. Um, but I think you'll find... Um, they do have a list in the index that they've got at the moment. Um, I'm not sure the assault cannons included. I will just check. I've got in my bag just over here. So I took it to work with me today to write a list. So... So it's only uh, weapons that had the special special issue ammo ability. So if I go to the weapons list, so what actually has access to it? We've got the bolt, death watch bolt pistol, the bolt gun, combi flame, a combi grab, combi melt, combi plasma. Um, The twin bolt gun, which is on the bikes. The stalker pattern bolt gun and the vigil spear. And that is it. No assault cannon. It's just a standard codex assault cannon for them. So, it's a bit hard because previously in the old codex, running storm bolter terminators where they brought in Bolt Discipline with Special Issue Ammo was gas before they FAQ'd it to being one or the other but that's fine if you're in half range you're still firing that many shots for whatever ammo type so um, yeah so I don't know it'll be interesting to see how they play out I think you'll see a lot of bikes now for Marines at least for Death Watch. Um, I played a unit of five in you know, the last stream game uh, against Matt, and they actually got work done and being three wounds apiece. I'm definitely thinking of uh, you know taking maybe two units of those because they just roll around. They put out a 20 shots for effectively 15 wounds in a unit. Um, they're just... They're actually really good for their points. They're 30 points a unit, so you think about it, uh, you know, that's 10 points a wound. So. Alright, so the Storm Bolter is almost done in terms of its base coats. Just hitting the gold for the skull. The Retributor Armor goal, I should say. Alright. So that's the Storm Bolter done. <laughs> At least in terms of its base coats. Next up, we're going to do the arm that holds the Storm Bolter.
now that the touch ups are done, I'm gonna go into washers. Uh, I'm gonna need Seraphim CPR, Crimson Car Caraberg Crimson, and Null Oil, which is what I'll start with. So. Because I would really like to get the basing on these guys tonight. Yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to getting these guys done, to be honest. I, I've been chipping away at them for the past, oh, what, two months or so now? Um, it's just something that I want to get done in terms of painting these guys. So... That's the black done. Hmm. That's an interesting one. Um, so the three outriders would be 135 points base. Let me have a look at the Death Watch bikes. I'm not sure if they come base with power swords or not. I don't think they do. Yeah. Um. It would depend. Yeah. I think shooting wise, the veteran bikes are better. I think close combat wise though, it's, I think they're on par because whilst the uh, Outriders get more attacks on the charge, the veteran bikers have access to power, power weapons um, for minimal points. They can take a power axe, a power maul or a power fist, uh, power sword, sorry, for three points per dude. So there's 15 points into a unit to give them an additional strength. So if you're wounding on fours with neg three in close combat, um, with being two attacks base plus one when they get charged, I reckon it's a it's yeah. It just depends on who strikes first at that point um, and what the Death Watch vets are equipped with. If it's, they're not equipped with power weapons and they're just stock standard. I reckon the Outriders can take them in close combat. But, yeah. I think shooting-wise, though, the standard vets have got it. The, the Death Watch vets have got it over them. Alright. Um, but, yeah. Do they have to pay for the plasma if they do take it? Um, I'm just pulling open my codex. Um, where are they? Outriders. No, it's not as an option for them. So, yeah, they get it base. That's interesting. Hmm. 
Yeah, I'm not seeing the option for a plasma pistol here. Unless they FAQ'd it in. Um, but as per codex, they don't seem to have it as an option. They're just faced with the... Like, the twin bolt rifle does can outrange the veterans, but they're putting out the same amount of shots. The vets, if they use crack and fire... Uh, sorry, not crack, crack and fire. Crack and bolts... On turn one will be the same effectiveness as the bolt rifle. On turn two and turn three, same again. Um, yeah. I think the fact that the Death Watch can get the two wounds at neg one. Rather than neg two, one wound. Is better because you're going to be able to... Put out more two damage shots. Sure, they might save um, a bit more, but you're getting more wounds through. Yeah, the the Death Watch can take the Power Fists um, on their guys for ten points a model, which means they're going to be strength eight, so wounding on threes, uh, but minus one to hit. That many attacks though, kind of counterbalances. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely an interesting one. I'd like I I'm actually planning on running some. Like I'm running some tomorrow in my list um, against some outriders. Like I, I've seen Matt's list, he sent it to me, so um, he will be running some outriders. So we'll actually get to see firsthand how they go pound pound for pound. All good, all good, Chief. Alrighty, we've already done on the well. I need Seraphim Sepia. Alrighty. So if, you, if you're just joining us or you haven't heard that the plan is with these gu this guy is to do, it, do the legs right up to, you know, edge highlights. So then I can start the basing on the entire unit. And then as the basing's getting done, I keep on going with the base coats on the rest of them. So now I'm, I'm just up to the washers on the uh, various parts. So I've just got the last wash to go, which is just Seraphim Sepia on the gold and the purity seal. And then once they are dry, we'll get into edge highlighting. But yeah, I just wanted to get the uh, basing started on these guys so that it's, uh, you know, I'm not waiting to fully finish this dude and then... I've got the base in a go, and I've got a guy in half, and all that kind of crap. So, but yeah. Cool. Alright. Those are the washers done. So, now we're going to do this guy. And again, it's going to be very similar colours to what has been done previously. We'll need the blue, the gold, black, and metal. And that's it. Um, so, we'll start off with the metal. Yeah. 
Alrighty. I don't need to use the character brush for this one, I should be using the other brush. This guy. The red one. So. Yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying the stream, hanging out with me on a, on a nice, chill Friday night. Yeah, it'll be nice to get a decent amount of hobby progress done tonight, and hopefully all going well. I can get the base coats down on this this guy too, and all complete base coats. Just got to do just right underneath here. It's quite hard to get to. And yes, I'm sure no one will see it, but I'd rather complete it anyway and get that in there. Cool. Make sure there's no uh, right in there. Of course, there would be. So next up we'll do the blue and then we'll go back to the legs and we'll do the edge highlights. So this one, the, the blue will take two coats. So I'll just do the one to start with. So I water this one quite the ways down just so then it's not a massively thick coat. Um, on veteran marines. Uh, do you mean like stern guard vets or company veterans or like what type of veteran marines you're referring to?
because yeah i do like the fact that that is an option um in terms of the battalion having six elite choice options um which i think was the case in eighth as well um but yeah i i do like that that openness in the one detachment and not having to spend cp to get it No, we have access to them. We can take them. Um, I'm pretty sure. They are one of the units we can have access to. Um, as well as standard intercessors. I'm pretty certain. I'm not... I'll check in a minute, but... Because... Like, they... Standing intercessors won't have the same profile in terms of being veterans, but um, the only units that Death Watch can't take are assault squads, attack bike squads, bike squads, devastator squads, stern guard veteran squads, tactical squads, and scout squads. So they can't actually take veteran intercessors. But they aren't troops. They're they're in the elites, so that's kind of the payoff there. Now, for the edge highlighting. Yeah, I, I've heard a lot of people are raiding Blade Guard Ancient. Not Blade Guard Ancient, sorry, just Blade Guard in general. They're just getting work done for their points, um, which is great uh, to see that they're doing that. They're, they're, you know, they're effectively the new, ve the, they're, apart from veteran intercessors, they're the veterans of the Primaris guys. And so... Having them being good in close combat is actually great. Um, so. But yeah, I also I also absolutely love my stern guard. I've got a unit of them. Um, I just kind of wish that. Um, they weren't, uh, you know, just special issue bolt guns. I, I kind of wish that they still had access to special issue ammo, but that makes it a Death Watch unique uh, in that regard. So, you know, can't have it both ways, unfortunately. Yeah, one thing I'd be interested to see would be how um, Blade Guard vets would go as Death Watch. That'd be something I'd be keen to see. In terms of combat ability in comparison to standard Death Watch Marines.
Oh, no, no, so just standard Stern Guard. Just standard Stern Guard vets, not actually Death Watch Stern Guard. So the special issue bolt guns are only one damage, I think. But they are neg two base from memory. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Yeah, the special issue bolt guns neg two one damage base. So they'd be only max two wounds at neg two if they got access to the special issue ammo and tactical doctrines. So. But the other thing I do like about the Death Watch is now you actually get to choose when you have Doctrines. Um, and which ones. Yeah, 35 points a dude for a Storm Shield and Power Sword is, you know, pretty good. But, are they only two wounds apiece, is the question. No, the three wins a piece. With three attack space, yeah. I think they do better than vets for those points. Because for unit of five, vets before upgrades is 100 points. Storm shields are five points a dude. And they've already got power swords, so they're going to be 25 points a model. So you're looking at 125 points there before you've even added anything else for a unit of five so and that's going to be 10 wounds instead of nine i don't know i think they need an apothecary though Yeah, I, I reckon that they work better than a standard vet with the same loadout, 100%. Alright. See how much of this is actually still paint. Plenty.
game on Steve. How you going, man? Welcome to the stream. Thanks for joining us. I'm just uh, working on some more Death Watch veterans at the moment, Steve, as you can probably see from the stream title. But I'm doing a little bit of a different take on them at the moment. I'm doing them in a bit different order to what I would normally do them. So I'm doing the legs to a complete finish with the goal of actually getting the basing material on them tonight on stream as well on a full unit of five so yeah yeah nice man what are you looking to paint yourself Yeah, nice, man. Yeah, sick. I, um, back in the day, back in, uh, the times of 8th edition fantasy, I actually almost started a Beastman army myself. Uh, I was, yeah, I was very close to actually starting it. Um, and when I almost started purchasing stuff, actually I already had, um, I then, uh, yeah, I just went, I was already going ham on the high elves and then the world went boom. So, uh, yeah, I kind of was like, okay, they're not gonna, well, at least I, I haven't played fantasy in years, so. I know it's Age of Sigmar now, but I haven't, um, yeah, I haven't played, like, with my High Elves for ages. I'm just really glad that they've now got actual new models and all that kind of stuff too. So, but yeah. What have you got for your, um, Beast of Chaos Army so far? Um, I'm not sure, Chief. I haven't played Age of Sigmar in ages, so I, I actually couldn't tell you. I'm sure probably Steve could, though. Uh, the good old Sigmarites. 
Yeah. I, I actually didn't get drawn in on those dudes, to be honest. I actually um, really liked how they did the Chaos guys to start with, at least. Added some new flavor to them. I know a lot of guys use them as Chaos cultists and such. Yeah, nice. Is it... Is the cockatrice you got... Is that the, um... Standard G-Dub model? Or did you have to end up going third party for it? Because I know they released a model for it years ago. Um... But yeah, it's been out of production since. Unless it's been transferred to Forge World. Ah, okay. Well, at least they're actually, you know, using that model. I remember when they first released that for Storm of Magic. Um, it was, you know, it was a great looking model um, for when it came out. So, I wonder how, how well it's holed up in comparison. That's, that's going to be something I, I'm interested to see. Um, but, yeah. Like, I remember back when there were things in the the codexes and the army books that just weren't existent. Um, for example, the Herdstone. Yeah, right. No, that's awesome that it's still, you know, yeah, it's being, you know, being the uh, fine cast that needs a bit of work, but, you know. I think the only flawless stuff you get nowadays is in um, plastic apart from mold lines so yeah but yeah no it's, it's glad that they're still making that model I remember yeah Storm of Storm of Magic was a good expansion for fantasy I had some fun with that with the high elves that was just ridiculous um, but yeah didn't play it too much though Yeah, yeah, that is true. Depending on the model, they definitely would be rarer. Yeah, nice. I like that they did that kind of thing, that they brought the Endless Spells in such a way that you've actually got pieces that move around the board. Because I'd remember the uh, the dreaded Purple Sun uh, in 8th edition, you'd actually have to leave the template on the field and you'd have to move it around as you go as that thing would roam the field. Um, so, but if you need the template for something else, you're up the creek, really. Or you wanted to cast Purple Sun a second time. But yeah, nah. There's, there's some good games I had in 8th edition fantasy, I will say that. Have they got many more realms to come out with for Endless Spell, Steve?
Yeah, yeah, I have. <laughs> Too easy, Chief. I'll catch you on Tuesday. Um, uh, it'll be a good game. Uh, looking forward to it. So, I'll catch you then. Yeah, Steve, I have. If you uh, if you hit exclamation mark Discord, it'll be up if you if unless you've uh, joined it already. Where are we? Yep. Sick. Yeah, I only just set it up the other day as well, so uh, that that's one thing I was like, you know what? If people want to jump on on a Friday night and paint with me as well, and, and you know, chat, I'm gonna need Discord. Because <laughs> um, yeah, you know, whilst yes, I can sit here and paint by myself, but you know, if there's ever you know viewers that want to jump in and, and paint alongside me, you know, do their own hobby and have a good chat. Uh, I'm all for it. So, that's kind of the plan. But yeah, no. Shit, I'm, I've got, got the hang of it. I tried setting it up once and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to leave it. And then I actually sat down, I read all the options of all the different stuff, figured it all out, spent the time and got it there so but yeah hopefully as you know the channel grows and, and more people you know follow the page and, and come and hang out that we'll um uh you know get more guys in the community and you know whether that's guys locally to us steve or um even uh you know, crew internationally that follow it, follow my channel as well. But yeah, this the, the whole streaming thing for me is more of a labor of love more than anything. I'm just uh Chipping away at things, I'm not wanting to rush into it and force it. So, I'm just chilling out. Um, taking my time with things. So, yeah. Alright. Well, it looks like I've almost finished the highlights on this, the legs. Alrighty, well, hopefully that should. So that's the legs done. The edge highlights, all the washers, all ready to go, so that I can base them. Um, so yeah. So next up, I think I'm gonna keep on going with the. Storm Bolter Arm. So. I know you play 40k as well, Steve. How, how do you find, like, w which one's your preference? Do you prefer Age of Sigma over 40k? Do you prefer 40k over Sigma? 
is that you know are they relatively on the same standard for you like how do you how do you uh, find the two games in comparison ah so the smaller star stuff I remember uh, learning Kill Team when it first came out in um, the current form that it is. Um, you know, to back when I was working, uh, and so it was yeah, I was just um, you know, it was it was interesting. Yeah, that is also true. It's, the attention span is. Uh, is quite a thing so I haven't actually seen much of the Warcry stuff how do you um how do you rate it like I know the, the models are very characterful from what I've seen but what do you think of the gameplay like is it very similar to Kill Team or is it you know does it have its own kind of Sigma style like you know Yeah, nice, nice. Which is good. I'm guessing it's... Mm, it's pro Would I be right in saying it's kind of a cross be between Kill Team and Necromunda, but for Age of Sigma? Or is it closer to one over the other? Let's grab out what I need to do the basing. Alright. So I'm old school in terms of doing my basing, chat. I do it with sand. And PVA glue. Yes, I know. It's archaic. In the era of um, GW base paints for, for basing your minis. All right, we'll start off with the ones that aren't on blue tag first. What I'm going to do is just going to chuck PVA all over the base. Then, 
to coat it nicely. Get as much excess off as possible without tapping it, and then just tap it on my palm over the over it, and hopefully that shakes loose anything that is uh, loose. So, cool. One down. So for this I'm going to take the arms off because otherwise the arms could go everywhere. Ah, oh, okay. That's interesting. Ah, oh, so there's not just um, kind of player v other player, players team elements in there. There's also like you can play, like they uh, a player doesn't have to play their team. They could play the a big bad for example instead, and your team's got to beat them. That's actually really cool. I like that. So it's kind of that kind of brings in elements from um. Uh, Blackstone Fortress, I reckon. Because they've got that in there as well, where it's, um... You've got, like, the... Ambot and the Amble, and the Chaos Troops in there, and the, the drones and such. So, and it's really cool how they've got that, um, division of forces as well for, for the, your, um, team. I think over the years, Games Workshop has definitely learnt a lot from the different games that they've produced, what has worked, what hasn't worked. So now that they're kind of combining elements, depending on the game, into the ones that do work, into you know particular games, and the ones that don't work, you know they they leave in their the current game, but they don't take them out and use them elsewhere. So. Alrighty, that's in based. Just chuck the storm bolter and the shield back on. Next one. So this can be a bit of a tedious process, but you know, it is what it is, I'm afraid. But you know, I've done my basing like this for over 12 years, so I'm not going to change my ways easily. Do you play one particular team, Steve, or do you have multiple teams that you play? Yeah, true. Variety is always, as they say, the spice of life. So yeah, no, definitely, definitely agree that it's a good thing, especially for skirmish games like that, that you can have a small model count um, to, you know, do multiple different forces and, you know, you don't need to have, like, 30 plus models for an army. Now, even 40k, you can, you're looking at 50. Sometimes you can go even higher than that, depending on the army. So. Alright, 
second last guy before the legs that I've just painted. Yeah, exactly as well. Like, it's a lot easier to start a force for a skirmish style game than it is for, say, 40k or Sigma. Because, you know, to get to a minimum points level, you've got to invest in a HQ, you know, at least one, if not two, troop units, and then other, at least for 40k, other units from there to even get to like 500 points. Yeah, I did see that they added um, Stormcast and Night Haunts in there. I remember when it initially came out, it was primarily like more your Chaos kind of Warband Barbaric style forces. So it's good to see that they're adding in the other factions from Sigmar into it now um, as well. Which means, like, if you want to, you could actually take those models and use them in Sigma. It, you know, I could be wrong on that. But, you know, it means that if you decide to go play Sigma, you've got a double use for those models. And also, they can... Yeah, Slave to Darkness, yeah, yeah. Um, you could, um, you know, add some extra character by using them in your armies. Which I always like. I've always liked the idea of having models that you know different poses. You know different. You know different to the standard. Um, for for things. That's why, at least for me, why I picked up Kill Team Cassius. Because you know, yes, there's the 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 Cassius, but there's also a Blood Ravens Librarian, and all the different veterans are styled to their chapter. And it's awesome. Absolutely love it for that. So I'm actually going to take my time with painting those guys up. And it's going to be sick. I'll, I'll do them on stream as well. Um, Alright. Now we're up to the current dude's legs. And that will be him finished. But I am going to need more PVA glue in the process. Hey! Thanks, Kraken Seagulls. Really appreciate it. Hope you're having a good night, uh, my man. trying to get this is the one of the narrower sets of legs for the death watch so it's actually really hard to get into certain spots so Alrighty. So I believe that'll put our follower account up to uh, 41. I will have to update it in a second here. But that only means we're into the single digits, guys, for um, getting uh, new to getting to be an affiliate level streamer or channel. Which is awesome. Thanks for all the support. On uh, new fact, in terms of for 40k, the new faction train rules. So, you're talking like the new war zone stuff, like the different um, terrain sets that came out with the um, tactical deployment stuff that they did.
I haven't actually looked into it, to be honest. I like the idea that they've come out with terrain sets. However, um, what I would have liked to have seen, and yes, this is going to sound relatively old of me, and I know, Steve, you've, you have you've been around for a bit, so I reckon you've probably seen this too. I reckon bring back the big boxes of, um, of terrain. Like, I remember they used to do the Imperial Sector and the Imperial City. Bring those style of boxes back. Like, do, like, a box that can do a 4x4 four four on its own, or they can do a 6x4 on its own. Like, I reckon that would be a lot better. That means that you can just pretty much go, cool, here's all the terrain. We set out, um, set it out, and you're good to go for a game. But from what I've seen, there's not as much line of sight blocking stuff in the current ones. So... Yeah, like, I think... G like, they used to do so much terrain. I remember they used to do hills and... So many other things. It's crazy. Um, but... You know, now they... They don't... They don't do as much terrain. Um, you know, yes, some of that terrain was for fantasy, and so they decided to not keep on producing it, which is unfortunate, because some of that stuff is actually really nice terrain. Yeah, the stuff like craters, like there was the um, Battlefield Debris, for example. Um, that little, that had a crater and a crashed rhino, like that was, that was awesome. That was really cool. And you know, if they hadn't done more stuff like that, I would have, I reckon they would have done pretty well. I think the older Eldar, so all the Eldar stuff, like the trees and stuff they released, I think they could have done better. I think they could have done better. Um, so... But, yeah. I I'd like to see more faction-specific terrain as well, but also you've got third-party companies doing that now anyways. So, alright. Let's have a look at something quickly. I'm gonna go create now projection. I just need to make sure. Ah, oh, cracking singles. Your name's gone right over to where it's it's cutting. So I have to fix that up quickly. But yeah. Um, need to make sure that that's looking better than it was. It's close, but let's see. Yeah, that's good. That's better. And then we'll fix that up. And then I'll just quickly adjust this. Um, where is it? Um, alrighty, so there we go. And cool. So just gonna quickly have a look at something. see how things are going yeah cool it is updated on the channel that it is 41 followers but not uh on the follow account so but yeah
So I'm just gonna, you know, with the gold, I'm gonna do the two, two different layers. But yeah, Steve, I reckon terrain is something that, yes, there are third company producers of it, but I reckon if G Dub were actually to get in the game with the current level of their plastics, and like. Yeah, I understand they've got the current kits, but they're like, for one kit, it's like, you know, 150 to $230. It's like, guys, people aren't going to go and make an entire table worth of this terrain unless they are actually, like, willing to spend a thousand bucks on your terrain specifically. Or they can get a great deal. Um, so... That's where I reckon the 3D printer guys are, are winning out. Or the, um, whatchamacallit, the um, laser cut MDF as well. Are able to just take a lot of the market share because of, because of things like that. So, but yeah. If there was a terrain piece apart from craters that you wanted to see, or if you had ideas of any new terrain, what would you want to see? Yep, yep. So you'd have like larger pieces that'd be line of sight blocking that troops could climb up and over, but also there'd be smaller parts that act like barricades, like that kind of stuff. I reckon that would be awesome as well. Or even in a smaller capacity, you could do something like that, like doing a crashed, like I know this is Imperial, but doing like a crashed Thunderhawk, for example. Um, and being like not like the forge world one where it's just the the uh, realm of battleboard tile because that's like oh yeah cool you've just sculpted a tile that's got a thunderhawk in the center of it like why bother like even doing that so like that i reckon that'd be sick that'd work 100 percent I think one thing I'd like to see would be, at least for them to bring back, would be the Tyranid stuff that they used to do, the resin stuff. I think that was Forge World, though. Like, if they were to bring that back, I reckon that it, they, they would sell so much of that, the Tyranid Spires. Um, so... But we'll see what ends up happening. Um, but I read, yeah. It'd be interesting to see, um, yeah. Like for me, my go-to terrain, at least for MDF stuff, is the uh, frontline gaming guys. I absolutely love some of their 3D stuff. 3D, uh, not their 3D. Sorry, their. Um, 
who's he what's it there uh mdf it just has such a great quality to it so and they've got so many different varieties now as well than what they used to so all right now we're up to the main torso i've still got to do the second coat of the bronze but that's fine um and i just got a message recently i should probably get back to it um Yeah, like, they're Aussie blokes as well. I, I'm always for supporting local Aussie business too. I think for me, like, a bit of my history, I actually designed some stuff for Frontline Gaming. So, way, way back a couple of years ago. So, that's kind of that. I've got a lot of their, I've got a lot of their um, ITC Urban Terrain line that they don't do anymore. Um, as well, but yeah, no, the Knights of Dice stuff is amazing. Like, I've seen Viv posting on some of the Middle Earth pages, and he's coming up with new, like, Gondorian ruins and stuff, and it just looks amazing. Uh, absolutely love what he's been, produ like, producing for that. It, it's just so good. Um, yeah, just really striking, really simple, but yet effective in terms of that, like how it looks and i've seen some of his painting guides and yeah they just do a really good job like so Alrighty. so i think with this dude when we're gonna start with the metal i think the metal is my go-to starting off color um at least at this stage but yeah so, no, nah, Knights of Dice are great as well. Uh, I definitely agree. They're, they're an awesome, awesome couple of blokes. So. I think the one thing for me that kind of, like, for, for their stuff is that even though it's MDF, I would want to sink so much time into painting it properly. Um, for, for, ter for it being, like, terrain. I'd want to sit down and I'd want to put the time into it. Um, whereas, you know, yes, there are other companies where you you can do that with you know frontline stuff depending on the the one yes but also at the same time you can get away without but yeah i think it's that one thing like everyone's got their own taste everyone's got the the companies that they like and etc so yeah yeah It's like a never-ending process um, in terms of that. Like, you're constantly going back, oh, I missed this detail, I'll, I'll go back and I'll fix that. So, I think, for me, like, even the GW stuff, the older stuff that's, like, really well detailed and everything, I don't do all the details. Like, I don't dry brush all the skulls and do all the gold and all this kind of crap. I just do the, bait, the 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 main colors and call it done. Like, it looks great, even without all the extra detail. Um, do I want to do that extra detail? Yeah, maybe at some point. Is that now, though? No. I've got models upon models to paint. Um, I, I, you know, if I ever want a break uh, from painting 
actual models, then yes, I can do terrain and that's fine. Um, but it's only getting, you know, the, the black on there and then doing a two layer hot dry brush. So. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's so much detail, like you get the base codes down and, and you, you know, you can play with it and you're like sick. Um, that's something that I'm actually want to do at some point is actually uh, crack out all of my MDF stuff. Cause previously I'd built it like so, the MDF stuff, but I hadn't um, painted it before assembling. And then I want to, went to go paint it and it's a pain in the ass. It's a, it's a complete and utter pain to paint. So I'm actually now going to, before assembling it, I'm going to spray paint the uh, different components, the colors that I want them and then assemble it. So then I don't actually have to worry about painting it once it's all together or I can do all the details and stuff um, once it's together. Like there are some that have got like exposed brick through the walls. So things like that. I'll, I'll paint when it's once it's together, but. Ah, okay, Rustoleum. Like, I've been wondering, like, I because I watched the Knights of Dice, Viv, he was saying, um, go with British paints. At least he's found it, but if Rustoleum, like, you've had a good, you know, a good experience with Rustoleum. Like, I haven't, um, started with any of them yet, but yeah, I'll, Go with a Rust-Oleum black so it, it doesn't soak in too much. Because that's what I found when I did dry, uh, undercoat them with black the first time. Just any old black. Is that it just soaked. It just soaks up so much paint. So I want something that's actually going to seal the MDF first. Whether, that I ha whether I have to... Yeah, because, you know, MDF being just fibers that have just been re-glued together, it just absorbs so much, like, water and moisture um, when it does get wet. So, something to seal it first, and if rust is able to do that, great. Um, you know, or if I have to do a matte varnish or a gloss varnish or something first, just to seal it, or a sealing spray... Uh, whatever ends up having to be done so that it doesn't soak in and then I'm able to get a nice flat coat get all the angles flip it over do the exact same thing and not worry about it from there would be awesome so and I'd be able to get you know I think I've got Four buildings sitting in MDF, ready to do that too. And I've got four, six existing ones that I want to do that, like, do spray painting to as well. But I'll re-undercoat and then I'll actually um, use painter's masking tape to cover up the areas that I don't want to paint particular colours. And do it that way. Um, so. But that'll obviously be after I seal it and repaint it black. Um, so. But yeah. So I'm just getting the... The metal's getting done pretty quickly on this guy. Like, there's not much on the chest... Um, obviously with the legs being separate, it's not taking a lot of time either. So there's just these few bits of details, you know, that the sensor on his backpack or the, or the vents and such and the, the piece in behind there as well that I've got to do around the head. But again, taking little to no time at all 
to get this silver down. And then what I'll do is I'll go back and I'll do a second coat of that gold, that um, for shook copper, I'll do a second coat of that before continuing on here. But yeah. course I would just lean on some spots that would have just gotten paint on my hand and they weren't dry yet so I'm gonna have to go back over those which is fine cool all right that's those done It's also why I do the metal first on the on the heads because then I don't really care if it gets on his actual head because then I can just go over the back over it with um flesh the flesh color so cool all right so the metal's done then let's go with shoot copper again and I'll pick up the remainder of what's sitting there for the um, thing Hope you guys are enjoying your evening chat. I, I appreciate you guys sticking around with me and hanging out. I don't mind too much that it's going a bit onto the blue on the inside. I just want a nice, strong coat over the top of the existing stuff. So that way it's a nice, solid color. And that I don't have to stress too much otherwise.
that's got a solid coat. That means that's also done. Ah, oh, goodness me. I've been streaming for almost three hours. Oh. So I think next up we're going to do, we'll do the gold on the main torso of the dude. There's only two spots, so shouldn't take too much to get it get it base coated at least. So again, just trying to be a little bit more careful here, but not too careful. Whilst yes, it is a pain to get in and touch up those spots, it's not a big deal. Like just going with the fine detail, br the, my insane detail brush, I should say, to do it. God will probably need two codes on here anyways. So that's fine. Just get one on here for now. And then we can come back and do a second one later. But I dare say we'll get this guy finished tonight. We mightn't get onto the shield, but we'll see how we go. Uh you know, if that's the, the price I have to pay for getting the basing done, then so be it. Alright, next up, we'll do the brown. Now, I might actually grab a bit more, because what I'm going to do... I'm going to use the brown to kind of transition from the black for the, the, the cape. So I'm going to flip it and just place it like so, just so I can get all the different areas underneath. So we'll start off with all the uh, the brown elsewhere with a smaller detail brush or a smaller base coating brush I should say Alrighty. Because after this, I've got the like I'll do the brown under on the underside of the the cape or the cloak, whichever way you like to call it. I interchange those, so I don't mind. 
Um, but I will be doing uh, Crack Stone. So I need a, another colour other than black, otherwise it'll just take a, a couple of coats to... at least just show a colour. So... This one, I just want to leave one streak over the center. This is another one of those sections that is a bit hard, is these little straps at the bottom of the accessories that the, the Death Watch guys have on their chest. It's always a little, of a little bit of a bugbear, I find. They're just modeled a little too close to the, to the actual armor for my liking. Alright, so now we're going to get... The regiment brush out because this guy can cover a lot of area really quick so I didn't want to water down the color too much to dilute the actual coverage. And then it's got enough fineness to the to the point when it is splayed out like this that I can get in and do the detail around the spot different spots. Cool. So that's the brown. Done. It adds a nice base for the crack stone to go onto. Alright, next up, we'll do the flesh. So as with all my flesh, I actually really enjoy using rat skin flesh. It's a nice mid-tone that when you apply uh, rifle and flesh shade to it, ends up like that. really nice it's it's not super dark but it looks tanned which is kind of what I, I, I'd like to go for here so for this one I'm gonna grab my character brush this time I'm actually gonna water it quite well because again this being a, a visible point of the on the model I'd rather it get two thin coats than one thick coat.
and the character brush also allows me to control it a lot easier because I've also got the metal around that around in spots then I'm, I can work the character brush a lot easier around those areas Too easy, Steve. Thanks for having out, hanging out with me, my man. I will catch you next time. Alrighty, so it's looking pretty good, chat. She's getting there. Once he decides to focus. So I've still got to go and probably do a second layer on the gold uh, and and the and the skin. But this dude, sorry, he is getting there. Um, alright, next up, let's, um, yeah, we'll do the gold, we'll do the second coat of the gold. I'll leave the, the face for now, let that dry, and we shall go from there. So, if you're just joining us, chat, welcome. My name's Scotty D49, uh, streamer out of Canberra, Australia. Just you know, mainly a, a Warhammer 40k streamer, whether it's 40k games or whether it's hobby exactly like this. 
Um, yeah, that's primarily what I'm doing at the moment. I've tried doing some gaming, like video games. Haven't had much success, whereas this has been a lot more successful for me. Um, so I'm just sticking with what's working at this stage. So I'd like to thank you guys for joining me on your on your Friday nights, or could be Friday morning for you guys, depending on where you are in the world. So welcome. Hope you guys are enjoying the content. Enjoying the stream. Whether you're getting your own hobby done as well, or whether you're just chilling. I mean, uh, pass the time by watching something. But yeah. So that's the second layer of the gold done. So. gonna go with the, the little touch of red that I need to do. I'm just gonna go grab the tiniest bit that I need. Put the rest back in the pot. And then water it down. Now, we'll probably have to go and touch that up later, but that's okay. I don't mind. Because touch-ups are a part of my process. Alright, so just depositing the red back in. Perfect. Alright. Next. This is where we're going to go, and we're going to do the inside of the cloak. We're going to do the first layer. Actually, scratch that. We're going to do the first layer of the blue on the outside. So... Very similar process again to what we did with the brown on the inside because it's a base paint. We'll get a fair amount of it out, but we also will water it down as well. So. wanted to grab a little bit of water not too much to oversaturate it with water but enough that it thins it out a little bit yeah perfect yeah boy and then we're just gonna start Nice even coat, getting it on there.
All right. So the hardest spots are up the top here, where it actually all comes together. So it's where I have to control the points with the bristles and just guide them the way I actually want them to go. That probably wasn't as controlled as the other side, but sure. I'll deal with it. <laughs> now there, I'm not actually using the tip of the brush. I'm actually using the edge. So there will be some blue on that underside. That's okay, because that's not actually the, uh, you know, we haven't done the, the cracked stone there yet, so it doesn't actually matter all that much. Cool. Perfect. So that's the blue done. On the cloak. And whilst we wait for that to dry, because that will also need a second coat, we're actually going to go back and we're going to do the, the skin. place it on his torso and I can access the head like that. Perfect. So yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'll probably be done the base coats on this guy tonight, except for the shield. Which is still great progress. The fact that I finished an entire piece from start to finish and have got the basing on it. And then gotten the base coats done on three out of the four remaining. It's actually really cool. I, I'm glad that I'm able to smash through this amount of stuff in a consistent fashion. So again, I'm just going very carefully back over where I painted the flesh. But also, I also am making sure it's relatively watered down as well, more than it was the first coat. So that then I don't actually uh, cop any streaks. So it's more like a glaze at this point, uh, just to get a solid color. 
colour over the top. With little to no streaks in it as well. But also I need to be careful that I don't use too much so it pulls and dries and I lose the detail. Which is what I'm doing. I'm just controlling how much is actually on there. Mainly the dude's face more than anything. So his face is done, there will be needing touch-ups on the metal and probably then the face, which is fine. Alright. That blue is actually relatively solid, but I would like to do a second coat. However, before doing that second coat, I want to do the first coat on the other side. So, whilst that's drying, I'm going to flip it over to the backpack, and we're going to get cracked stone. I'm going to do the exact same thing we did earlier. Except there's not going to be any blue tack marks. Alrighty. Seems like all the paints I want to use have clogs or strips of gunk around on them consistently tonight. Cool. Alright. Regiment brush. We're going to grab a little bit of water. that much. That much. Cool. We want it that watery consistency. So that then I can paint it over the brown. And whilst yes, it mightn't fully cover, that's okay. Because then I get a portion where it's a bit more paint rather than water. I come back over it.
All right. Yeah, check that coverage out. I actually probably can't because it's still wet. If I cover it up a little bit so you can focus in the sides it wants to. There we go. Hopefully, you can see. Oh, come on, you stupid thing. I want it to focus here. There you go. It's got pretty good coverage because of the brown underneath. It's getting there. The only problem is that the blue and the... The cracks don't are the last color on that um, to be done. So I'm kind of just chilling. I'm going to chill for a bit. I'm not going to, you know, rush it. I don't want to start this other side of it. At least not yet. Um, so. But yeah, I yeah, hope you guys are having a good night and enjoying the stream. I have been. It's It's been awesome to hang out with you guys. I know, yes, that I'm just uh, sitting on my phone. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, like tomorrow we got the, the 40k learning game with Matt. That's going to be awesome. Salamanders versus the Death Watch. And some, you know, I've seen the list, and it's going to be an interesting match. That's for certain. It's going to be good fun. Matt's a good mate of mine, and you know, we've known each other for a number of years now. So yeah, it's going to be pretty sick. I'm looking forward to it. That'll be from around 9:30, not 9:30, sorry, 10:30, 11 Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time. So 11 and a half, 12 hours from now is what you're what you're looking at. Um, in terms of gameplay is when we'll be kicking off once I set up the stream and everything which will be sick um, but yeah uh, I reckon that the spots that are near the blue are almost dry let me just fix and just see make sure yep so what I'm going to do I'm going to flip it I'm going to do the blue again But we aren't going to do the edging until the, the uh, touch-up stage again. Alright. So. Just want to water it down and same consistency that it was earlier. A touch more. There we go, perfect.
But we're getting there, guys. Getting there. Slowly, but surely. I want to thank those of you who have been sticking with me most of the stream, if not all of it. It's been uh, great to have you with us tonight. Kind of a bit hard on this side not to do the edging because it leads on from right up the top here. Sick. Cool, alrighty. So that's done. At least for the blue. That's the second coat. leave the bases overnight so that it's not uh, a problem for me otherwise I could start painting them and they could start to not want to stay that way all right Now that the edges where I'm going to pull it off are dry, I'm going to flip it over. And get ready to do the underside, because that's almost dry. But yeah, so, been some good progress tonight, chat. Hope you guys have enjoying it, enjoying the conversation that I've had with uh, Chief and Steve. Uh, yeah. So, coming up is you know two live two thousand point games, forty k in the next four days. So you know if you're keen to see some more forty k action, stick around. It's gonna be awesome. Um, so yeah. But yeah. It's been awesome. I've been really enjoying doing this with you guys. Streaming, showing off my painting, showing off some games of 40k, sharing the content. It's awesome. Hope you guys are enjoying it. I really do. Because, you know, for me, like, if, if you don't know me, uh, previously I used to do a 40k podcast. Uh, whilst I wait for this drive, I'm just going to chat to you guys. Uh, you know, I used to do a 40k podcast ages ago. Um, one of my good mates and we did it right up until you know um, probably a time where I was burnt out with 40k and it was great fun just talking about you know what's going on in the meta the tournament scene codexes heaps of stuff it's awesome and so you know I always enjoyed doing that I didn't find that to be too tedious you know and you know, this is very similar to that. I don't find this tedious for me. It's just awesome. It's, you know, it's sharing my hobby 
with you guys. So, you know, and if, you know, you guys want to share your hobby with me, join my Discord. It's awesome. Um, you know, if you're here to post review Discord in, in the chat, Nightbot will post up the link for it. Uh, and you can head over there, you know, I've got channels for all sorts of things, you know, there's, you know, you can jump in a hobby channel and chat with other guys that are on there from, from, the, from this channel, which is awesome. Uh, but you can also, you know, if you want to play Tarkov or you want to play Hades and chat with other people as you play, or, you know, if you want to play any other games, I've got a bunch of channels that are two to five people as well. Um, so catering for that. And then, you know, you've got your general chats, you can post up hobby progress picks and all that in the Discord as well. Um, but yeah, no, head over there, guys. Like, if you want to, head over there. I've got the link on the channel page as well about where that is. Um, I only just set up during the week, so currently it's just me and Steve. <laughs> but no, it's, it's good. Like, yeah. I'm enjoying this with you guys. And I hope you guys are too. So, alright. This is still drying. I'm not sure if I'm going to have a chance to get to it tonight. It is getting relatively late. Um, so, I'm actually going to call it there, guys. Um, you know, I'm really happy with the progress that I made tonight. Um, so, yeah, no, I hope you guys enjoy the stream. If you haven't already, please follow the channel. Uh, you know, I absolutely appreciate it. You know, if, if you're enjoying your content, you want to see more of it, um, hit that follow button. Uh, it's always greatly appreciated. Anytime, you know, you want to have a conversation with me like these guys have had tonight, you know, I love chatting with you guys. You know, I, I'm more than happy to talk 40K or if you want to talk like my opinions on stuff. Uh, you know, ask questions, how I do things in the hobby, you know, what I think of certain things. Chief was talking to me about, you know, unit comparisons, things like that. Post up in the chat. I'm happy to have a conversation with you guys. Uh, you know, pretty much at this stage, every kind of fortnight, I'll do a Friday night stream. Um, you know, also Tuesday night fights. Uh, I'm going to try and keep them fortnightly. And I'll alternate between the two. So next week, I won't have a Friday night stream. Uh, if that lines up with my calendar properly, which I think it does. Because uh, I am going to be away in a couple of weeks. So there won't be a stream on the Friday or the Saturday. Um, yeah, that lines up perfectly. So yeah, I won't be streaming next Friday night. I'll be streaming on Tuesday night next week. Tomorrow as well. Uh, then Saturday next week. Uh, we'll probably hit up another hobby stream uh, for you guys. And I might do it in the morning uh, as well. And see how that goes. Do a morning stream instead. Uh, yeah. But, you know, guys, I absolutely love hanging out with you guys. And chilling and talking stuff. Hope you guys do too. You know, uh, love you guys. You're awesome. Um, but yeah, for tonight, I'm going to call it there. So, if you haven't... Also head over to the Facebook page, like the Facebook page. You'll see the post in the minis. There'll be a bit of a better view. But yeah, as the usual, guys, stay cool. And I will catch you guys next time.